I uh, want to pass it over to Anne, who will introduce our guest speaker. As many of you know, Anne's been a LGS member since 1986. And for several years, she served as a so solo program chair for the society. Now she's a member of the program committee. So I'd like to pass it over to Ann and ask her to introduce our today's speaker, Kelly Dunnigan. Thank you. Thanks, John, and hello, everyone. And I would like to tell you a little, about, little bit about Kelly. Uh, she's the Kentucky History and Genealogy Librarian for the Louisville Free Public Library. She has over 10 years experience working with the Kentucky History Room Collection, including city directories, sandboard maps, newspaper databases, cemetery and census records, and other curious gems of Louisville's local history. Those are all things we used to go down to the main library to access and can't get in anymore for right now. Kelly spent her childhood and formative years in Pasadena, California, Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and she graduated from Murray State University in Kentucky. And then in 2014, she obtained a master's in library science and information studies at Florida State. So she gets around. She's worked at LFPL for 13 years while having lived in the Highlands in Beachmont, Old Louisville, where her love for Louisville history has flourished and she currently resides in Shelby Park. Kelly wishes she could personally introduce all of us to the resources housed at the library, but until then, she's ready to present for us the Sandboard Maps. Thank you, Kelly. Thanks, Anne. Are y'all ready for me? We're ready. Okay. So, um, thank you so much for um, reading that off for me, Anne. Um, and thank you for inviting me to do this today. Um, Anne came to me, oh gosh, I guess that was last year, and said, hey, would you be interested in teaching this class? And I said, okay, sure. So um, I have not taught a class since before COVID. So I'm just dusting off my chops right now today. First time using Zoom as well. Um, so first, I'm, we're just a whole bunch of first. So I'm sitting here in my home in Shelby Park and what we're gonna do is I'm gonna start off with giving you a brief presentation about Sanborn Maps. I think several of you have already taken this class or had joined me in person when I taught this class at the library early last year and late the year before that. Um, and I'm just gonna do that. Then I will show us a little bit of a, an example time, if you will, and then we'll have time for some questions. So let me know at any point if um, you can't hear me or anything like that, but I'm going to, I believe now, share my screen, right, Jack? And then let's see here. So I'm sharing the screen and I wanna do my, I see now, okay. Sanborn maps, can everyone see that? I hope so. Uh, yes, we can. Okay, so. Here we go. Great. Now, so we have Sanborn maps at the library now. To give you a brief, um, I, I studied this book that I got to get the information for this presentation that was written by Diane Oswald called Fire Insurance Maps, Their History and Applications. It's hard to find. I got it through Interlibrary Loan. Um, but it's just this kind of great quote that I found about how there, these maps are the footprints of America's industrial revolution. But unlike temporal images, these maps are enduring relics that bear witness to the mortality of businesses, industries, and cities. Um, so this woman, Diane, really loves insurance maps. So let's see here. What are they? Um, basically, these are here to show the evolution of buildings in an urban environment, um, any sort of structure that was made. There, you're gonna see in these maps how they've changed over the years as maps have been made to reflect them. Um, and they're gonna give any sort of information to insurers to determine the level of risk involved in insuring these properties against fire. Because as we know throughout history, 
fire has been a huge culprit in losing the history to so many things as we know it. Um, even that one census we don't talk about. All right, so who uses these? Basically everybody, specifically historians, preservationists, um, anyone with local interests um, in their own homes, people, genealogists, I mean, anybody wants to use these if they know about them and that's what I'm here for. Let's see, why? Well, check it out. We can see that there are so many differences in buildings today versus yesterday. And so this is really kind of, I've taken these photos from Louisville then and now. So if someone who runs that account is here today, I would love to meet you. Um, I've been a big fan of this page on Facebook and look at this. So what is now Dairy Castle? Right there, right? And then what was then a drugstore is now, um, what is that called? North End Cafe, La Suerte, there we go. And we can see a view here um, over by the Yum Center. Look at all these pylons and whatnot. This one makes me sad. The record store that is now a Long John Silver's that's now closed, that now might become a CVS. Who knows? But you can see that there's all these differences to these buildings over time. This one is one of my favorites. This is from um, Four Pegs, what is now Four Pegs, and that's the original bar. You can still see that there's part of the original bar still there. Second Street Bridge. All things that we know and love here in Louisville. For any of you out of towners, welcome to Louisville. That Taylorsville Road, this photo, um, the one on top I believe is from the 1930s. And just uh, look what under a century can do. All right, so to give you just a brief history, um, this is called Petrie's Ethnography of Charleston. This is Charleston, South Carolina. This is what they believe to be the earliest fire insurance map that was created in 1788. It was comm commissioned by London um, after the American Revolution. And so in this one, they were really just gathering the wharves, public buildings. Um, let's see, they've also got you know, fire stations and streets in this um, urban environment of Charleston. So all downtown, all by the water. And that was 1788, which is kind of crazy. So we're, we're gonna skip over the years and we're saying, so these, sand, these fire insurance maps were um, created over the years. And so these people called underwriters would come visit the property in an urban environment and they would write down a list of things, which we'll get to in a minute. But as the cities grew, so did the properties and so did the underwriters. So more and more people would come visit these cities to take its information. And these maps were created as a way so that the underwriters could ensure these buildings faster from in the office. So essentially they were taking a photograph, if you will, but a, on a massive scale to be able to reference these maps and go, okay, let's pull out the map from this year that we made of this city and this part of the street of this city so we can ensure this building because we can tell what it's been made of, what the property lines are, such and such. So, making of the map. This is a real photo that I very much stole from Getty Images because I couldn't get it for free. So here I am citing it. I will not be selling it. So I feel absolved. This is the making of the map. So these underwriters now turn into surveyors. So they've got these surveyors that are coming out. They call them striders, pacers, or trotters. Historically, I've seen in a lot of the reading I've done for it that they call them striders a lot. Um, more than any of the others. 
And so they went around from property to property, street by street, and they were responsible for reporting over 100, sometimes closer to 200 features of a building that would be relevant to these underwriters in their offices, things that they needed to know for insurance purposes. So this is an actual photo of a strider walking around town, uh, but they did for the news and I just love it. So here he is again, hopping a fence. And this is just an example of some of the things that they would do. Um, some of the things that they would collect for their information. So you're talking about what type of frame of house is it or frame of building is it? What is the floor made out of? What is the roof made out of? Are there sprinklers in this building? Are there sprinklers? I mean, are there water tanks? Are there hydrants? Are there things that could combat a fire if something were to happen? Um, how many stories is it? It just goes on and on and on um, forever and on. And let's see here, types of roofs, block numbers. And if you all, those of you who own homes who are in this group today, these are all things that a lot of them, you've had to tell your home insurance company that they have. So you could kind of see it's, it's they're very, fairly similar. Um, we're just all assessing the risk. So, the process of this, you've got at one point in time, this is between, let's say, the early 1900s up until the 1940s, you have at least 300 Sanborn employees. Sanborn became the end-all, be-all <coughs> company um, for fire insurance um, that... There are several other companies that were around before then, but that's too boring to talk about. So eventually it becomes a Sanborn insurance company and you have over 300 employees traveling across the USA and they're collecting this data on their legal pads or clipboards. And um, once they got all of this information, so you're saying, look at, look at this, just this picture itself. This is a man who's walking down the street He's going around the house. He's surveying the house. He's probably measure. He is definitely measuring the house. He's measuring the property line, everything about it. And then he's just going to hop to the next property. Um, but once they collected this list of, of statistics, if you will, this data, they would send it to Sanborn's big office in Pelham, New York, so that these people in New York would interpret it and they would cross-reference all their notes and they would take the data and put it into an actual map or into plates, which are plates of a map. So pages of a map. And um, this, this, the accuracy, you'll see once we get into this, the accuracy down to, I mean, this is inches and feet. For every single building and over, there's over 28,000 of these. It, it just, it blows my mind and made more than one time for a city. This, this was, you couldn't have much error. Um, and I, I, I can't even, I, I imagine what it would be like if there was error or one of these trotters or striders came back with some bad information, how quickly you would be fired because you wasted so much time. It just blows my mind. It's, it's, it's such great attention to detail. So this is an example of a legend from a Sanborn map. I don't know if anyone has seen a Sanborn map in real life. I never have, and one day I will. But there are these massive books that have been made full of plates with an index at the beginning. Um, and then there's this legend. There are these really pretty books that I've you've seen pictures of. They're, they're in color and they're color coded. So you can see on this that it says, you know, there's Adobe building, stone building, um, what is it made of? That's important. Um, how does it open? I mean, I could maybe one day in all of this, I will come back and I will teach an advanced Sanborn maps class where I get down to every single detail that are in these legends. Um, I probably won't. 
but <laughs> it's, it's a lot, um, but at least it exists, which is great. So big color map to correspond with the big color books. Um, we love it, but guess what? On this database, it's only in black and white. This database that we have, when um, it was scanned, I think the originals were scanned in the Library of Congress and then sent to uh, what is ProQuest, our database company, um, a long time ago, everything was scanned in black and white, not in color. So they made up a legend that is black and white just for this database. So I suppose that's helpful. It's not beautiful color and everything, but they sure did do a good job. And I will show you where that is going to live when we get to this database here in a second. All right. Sanborn Basics. Okay, so some things that are covered when they're these are things that are covered that are in the Sanborn maps that are pretty easy things to remember. So at the beginning of every volume of one of these is index of streets. And that's the streets that they have for the version that they are showing you, which I'll show you in a minute here. Um, so that's what the index looks like. It's going to give you um, street names, it's going to give you block numbers, and then it's going to have a corresponding plate on the right which is just a page number. Think of it nothing more than a page number. So street, the block of the street, and the corresponding page number to find said building on the map. And then after the index are the special indexes. Honestly, this is kind of a very um, small list of interests, special interests. So it, it's kind of a business's index, but it, I haven't really found a rhyme or reason. It seemed to, they seemed to pick and choose what was the important, what were the important points of interest during this time. Um, but sometimes for some of these buildings, if it used to be called something and you knew what it was, or um, I don't know, a government building that can kind of help you see what you need before having to play around in the database. It'll just take you exactly to that plate number you need to go to. One of the biggest things to remember is that on these maps, one inch of map space equals 50 feet. Um, so one inch equals 50 feet. I think it says that at the beginning of these pages as well. Let's see. And there's your little scale that it will show you. So we've kind of got these things to just go about. And I'll show you how easy this is in a second. It can be tedious. I've been doing it for a long time. Um, while we've been shut down to the public, I've, I have very much have gained a, a very healthy understanding and um, of what you all do when you come into this department. Um, I have... I have spent more of my life researching in this position for everyone who has special requests for the past year, almost a year now. Um, and I, I just, I love what I do and I love seeing what you do. And a lot of what I've been doing are, is Sanborn map research. And you would think I would be the most biggest expert ever at it. I'm not, it's vast, you'll see why. And so I'm going to give you an example of how to search the Sanborn maps. I'm cheating. I'm going to do the most low hanging fruit. And that's the main library um, here in Louisville where I work. Um, and in fact, over on the right side of the picture, um, those two top windows, if you were to look a little to the right past the tree, there's another two windows and that's my department. The Kentucky History Room, if you haven't been in in a while, we've moved back to kind of its original location in the Carnegie side of the building on the second floor. And hopefully one day we'll get to reopen for you all by appointment again. So enough of that. Let us get to um, the internet. 
Does anybody have any questions at this time? Interject, tell me to repeat something. Are we doing okay right now, everyone? Uh, is there a handout? Is there a handout? There is not a handout, but I can absolutely, I was going to send you this PowerPoint through PDF. I'd be happy to do that. Um, this is kind of a go as you go. Um, the biggest part about this is getting into um, the database. That's the hardest part, I think, for all of this, which I'll show you how to use here. Okay, so the first thing we do is we go to the library's website. You can Google Louisville Free Public Library. Make sure when Google gives you the results, it should very much be the Louisville, Kentucky Library. But sometimes there has there happens to be a Louisville, Colorado, and they have a library. And they also have a Highlands area. They have a lot of things that are similar to here. So um, make sure it's a Louisville Free Public Library. It looks like this, or you can go to lfpl.org. Um, so once can we get here, screen, please. am I not sharing the screen? No, I just think example time and I'm seeing all of your uh, PowerPoint. Well, there we go. Thank you for telling me that. I'm just okay. moving away. All right. So I see here. How's that? Are okay. we on a website? Thank you. Yes. Yeah, thank you for yeah. telling me. Okay. So this is the website you want to see, lfpl.org. Um, the next thing you need to know I, is you have to have a library card. So if you have a library card and you have your library card number and you know your password, you are all set. If you have a library card, you think, or maybe it's been a while and you're not sure of your password, um, please give us a phone call. Um, down here in this page, there's this phone number that talks about curbside pickup. It's also our Just Ask phone number that's been around for a kajillion years. Call this number, 574-1611. If you need to double check on you having a library card or want to reset your password or anything like that. Kelly? Yes. Would most other city libraries have access to the Sanborn map similar to what you're doing with us on our Louisville library page? It really depends on the city. So for instance, I know that every state has Sanborn maps. Um, it depends on the city. Um, if they most likely probably do go through ProQuest is through their databases. Um, it's absolutely something patrons can request of their library to purchase. Um, for instance, this one that we have is, we have purchased a contract for it through July of 2021. And it's kind of one of those things that this year, I hope we all use it because if we don't use it, we lose it. So it's part of trying to do this class. Um, but most other, these Sanborn maps, to answer your question, they exist most likely where you live um, and it's up to the library system to have purchase um, a subscription to the Sanborn maps. So thank you. Yeah, feel free to ask your library about it. And if the, the key word is if they need to know, well, how do we get these? It's through ProQuest, P-R-O-Quest, Q-U-E-S-T. So um, for the Louisville people with your library cards, if you don't have a library card or it's been such a long time, we will welcome you back. Um, all you have to do is I'm going to scroll down. There's this on our website right here, new library cards. You click on this and there's some information about what you need to do, what counties count, all of this and whatnot. But the first step is to fill out an online application form. The second step is to call this phone number here and they will give you your library card number and you'll have a password and everything like that. So that's the most important thing. Kelly? 
They, uh, my understanding is you have to live in Jefferson County or surrounding county to be able to get a Louisville library card. Is that correct? That's, that's correct. Yeah, you have to you have to live, and it has a list right here of what counties are applicable to this. Um, which, if you do not work, go to school, or own property in Jefferson County, you have to pay twenty five dollars a year to um, have a library card. Um, so this is only for these counties right here. If there are any of you who are living outside of Louisville today that need to look something up in Kentucky um, or in Louisville, um, feel free to email me. I'll give my email address. Jack, I don't know if you're able to write that or if I can put it in the chat, but feel free to email me because this is what I'm doing. I'm doing all kinds of research requests for people from out of town, okay? All right. Let's see here. So let's get started. We go here. We go to our homepage. So this is a database. All databases for the Louisville Free Public Library System live in research tools. Research tools is where you want to go. So you'll click here. And the research tools are available by subject. I've had our um, part of our web team actually consolidate some of these. Um, I, we had a genealogy link, but not a local history link. And I, I just, um, I wanted it all, so I asked for it. So you can find the Sanborn Maps database down here in genealogy and local history. Um, resources, and it's right here, Sanborn Maps, 1867 to 1970. I'm going to go back here and show you something else, too. For those of you who don't want to worry about all that, our web team also has created a find a research tool. So you can start typing it in now, and this goes for all of the research tools, which is pretty neat, and you can type it in and click on it. Now here's the part, it's going to ask you for your library card number and password. You'll type that in and log in, okay? So now we're here. It's not a real pretty database, but it works. And here we are, browse and explore that. This is how we get into it. It's a little bit of information, right? Get all this. All right, so browse and explore. Browse maps. For us, we only subscribe to Kentucky. So that's the only option you have. But the cool thing about this is we have it for every single city in Kentucky that a map exists. Um, for any of you living out in the out east, there's a LaGrange. There is not an Oldham County, um, there is not a, uh, I'm sorry, a Prospect or Crestwood one, but there is a LaGrange. Um, I mean, we, we've got all kinds of them, right? Look at all that. We're going to go to Louisville. So there are several dates that these were produced. Um, some of you might have already seen that the Sanborn maps you might have seen in 1892, 1905, or 1906. 1906 is actually an addendum to 1905 with a couple extra sheets. Um, but these are available online without a library card through the Library of Congress. You can see they're actually kind of all over the internet. Um, you could type in Louisville, Sanborn Maps, 1892, 1905, and they're in color and they're gorgeous and they're in high resolution and they exist. But these, 1928 to 1951, these are the ones that you need with a library card. So I'm going to just click here. It doesn't matter. Whichever one you choose, it'll take you there. So hopefully, um, one thing to know is that the Sanborn maps, um, this ProQuest has recently given this database a little bit of a facelift, um, if you will. They've, they've kind of polished a few things, um, added navigational tools that are a little more easy to use, as well as um, kind of zooming in on things can be a little bit easier now. 
Um, but it is a little, it can be a little slow to load. I think that's because the image files are so large. Um, so up here at the top, it says Louisville, we're looking at 1928 to 1941, volume one, 1940, sheet 1A. They, <laughs> um, over the years, they give things some names or, or file names um, through Sanborn maps and other times they they seem to catalog things differently. Um, but really what you need to know is where it says state, city, and date, and volume. This is your navigational tools. Kentucky and Louisville, those are static items for now. Of course, you can change them. But the dates, these drop-down boxes are going to be your meat and potatoes of where you want to go. So you can always change it from here to here. All right, 1928 to 1941, 1928 to 1951, which is kind of an addendum sheet. Um, 1928 um, and a few years after that as they go is them actually in real time collecting the data and making it for the city. If there are other sporadic years, it's an addendum, it's an extension. Because as time grew or went on, cities have grown and moved on. So um, for all of us today, I, I do want it, um, you to know that these started out, th these started out as maps for a downtown urban environment area, places where buildings were very close together, places where buildings could catch fire and catch the next one on fire and the one after that. You know, like that time New Orleans burned down twice. Like, so they, they, these are for very compact, condensed areas where they're congested. And over time, as a city spreads out, so do homes and whatnot. So you're going to see in these maps that we start downtown. We start in the central business district of Louisville. And then you'll see that some are marked east, some are marked west, but they're going to start in the central business district. They're going to include Portland and Shawnee neighborhoods all the way west, which was the original Louisville. And then they're going to kind of loop around a little more east and a little more east. And then they're going to go south. And, and you know, so there's the highlands they are going to add the south of Louisville. Um, but really, at the beginning, you're going to have more luck if you happen to live in these kind of central neighborhoods, you know, which is anywhere near downtown. So Old Louisville, Germantown, Shelby Park, Smoketown, Schnitzelburg, um, these, these areas, um, including everything to the west and Highlands come a little bit later. Um, so there's no guarantee that your house is on here. And that's what I'm going to say. Um, and there's, there's not, I can tell you that if you have a house um, that is maybe a little further east to the central business district, it's possible yours is on here. You're just going to want to look at these later dates that they were made. Um, because you can see there's a huge span of time, 1906 to 1928. I mean, that's that's 20 years of a lot of things being built in the city that they're going to, you know, hopefully catch in these later years of making them. So it's this, this whole entire database is really just playing around. So here we are, we're, we're back here, we're looking at 1928 to 1941, which I think is a good place to start. Um, for those with historical homes, yeah, check out these other two places as well. Um, so, and then over here is the volume number, which is one of the books for that year, one of the big old books. So they've got volume one is what we're currently on, and then they've got east and west. So um, my example that we're doing is the main library um, here in downtown Louisville. Um, so this is what the be uh, one thing you can do is what I'm doing is over here you can zoom in and out you can rotate do all these things you see this uh, downward facing arrow you can also save these things which is pretty neat so you can save these to your computer um, so once you're in they're yours to keep um, uh, you can also use that middle scroll button in your mouse. In the middle of your mouse, that's what I like to use personally, and you can click and drag. 
they're pretty, these files are pretty malleable. So um, this is what our Louisville one looked like for 1940, kind of pretty. And then the first thing right here is an index sheet. Um, above it, there's some information, statistics and whatnot uh, for the year. And here's an index of streets, okay? So the main library here in Louisville, um, I know that it is at the address for it is 301 York Street. It is between third and fourth streets. Um, it, is par it is parallel and runs parallel to Broadway. So it's in between Broadway and York and third and fourth streets that are running north and south. So I'm gonna look over here for street names. I'm looking for York Street. I don't see York Street, right? Where's York Street? <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to look over here at Broadway. Huh. There's a corresponding, I'm not sure if York Street existed during this time. It's another thing to think of. And I know many of you or all of you who do this, you're pretty cognizant of what street names were, especially where you're living or for your interest. You probably know what a street used to be called. Um, and so I'm not sure if there's a York Street during this time. I don't really know much, but I see that there's a Broadway, but it's East Broadway. Um, and I see a West Broadway. I know the address is 301, 301 York Street. Let's just for fun, look at this 300 block. And this is plate 79, okay. So let's just see if it's on there, the library's on there. Um, at this point in time, I would say you can definitely click this downward facing arrow and go to every single sheet like this, or you can go up to the thumbnail grid, which is kind of my favorite because it lists everything out right there. And so we said this was what, 72? Um, 72. One thing to know is the way they've done this. Um, sheet 72, I, I kind of, um, I think 72, I want to look below it. They have listed the images above the plate number. Okay. And it even tells you if you hover over it, what sheet it is. So 301 York Street. Huh. Well, it's not there. Weird, right? I'm um, at Broadway, but I'm not quite there. I'm right at Broadway. The library is right below the south part of this grid right here. Okay. So what I'm saying is that this volume one, 1940, does not have the library in it. And now I can say, welcome to Sanborn Maps. Your journey begins here. So... That means I got to try again. So I'm going to go to volume two, West. Now let's just look at this one. Cover sheet. I'm sorry, index. I don't know. I can kind of see this map down here. I'm not so sure. So let's see. Is there a York Street? There is. Ah not the 300 block shucks okay weird but we know now that this is the west running so these two volumes right here are running west and running east on the streets technically the library is on west broadway but i'm not going to get into semantics if it's not there it's not there I'm moving on to the next one, east, okay? Index again. This is the biggest part of Sanborn Maps is you're just gonna have to click. <laughs> sometimes, if that's the logo I could have, it would just say, sometimes you just have to click. So let's go back here again, because now I see that York Street does exist, but why is there no 300 block? What's happening? I don't understand. There's no 300 block. The Broadway one's not showing me the plates that I want. 
Um, because I'm using the library as an example, I get to cheat uh, a lot for you guys today because it's a building of interest. So I'm going to go to the special index that I was talking about. And I'm just going to look for library. So I see Louisville. I don't see library. Louisville. Oh, free public library. Interesting. And I know that that one must be the main one because they have the other branches that existed at that time listed in that area. So Louisville Free Public Library, 33E. Ding, ding, ding. And I go back up here to thumbnail grid. We're looking for plate 33E. So 33E it is. What's this? Let me scroll down. What's this? Oh, I see something. I see that this is the Hayburn building on Broadway, the Westinger Galbert Apartments. And I know that it's behind this. Look at that, the Westinger Galbert power plant. What is now a parking lot. Power plant? I'm so confused. But check it out. We've made it. The Louisville Free Public Library. So this is the building as we see it. Um, the Broadway facing side. This is the York Street facing side, the bottom part. And it's telling us what this building is made of. Fireproof construction except exposed steel in rear facing and rear facing. I don't know what that means. Guess I need a look at my handy dandy legend, which I'm going to show you all in a second where to find that legend. But you can see built 1906. The heat is through steam and hot air ducts and blowers. I'm not sure if that's still the same anymore. Um, but it's also giving me feet, how many feet by how many feet, um, concrete floor. I mean, it's pretty neat, but even, I mean, this is actually a pretty simple one. Let me show you what the Habram building looks like. Look at that. There's the coal bin, boiler room. Now these are all pretty, very large buildings. And so they're gonna have a lot more information on them than an average house, let's say, okay? Um, so your, your house is not, your house is gonna look a lot different than this, but just be, you might not be looking up your house. You might wanna look up what um, a building is that maybe you own or someone you know owns or you have interest in purchasing or just wanted to know what it used to be. I have people from different neighborhood associations come into my department when people could come into my department all the time and look at these structures. They're trying to find the history of a building to see maybe what it used to be. Because just because you're, you're cross-referencing, let's say an address with the city directories that we use quite a bit to see who's lived in a spot or what a spot used to be called or if it was a duplex or if it's not now, all these historical options, these options for the history of your homes and buildings, um, they also exist in the Sanborn maps. And so there's some really neat stuff in here. Um, and you'll see that, you know, we've got, let me see if I just drop this down. Let's go to volume three for fun. You can kind of see how these are made. Like over here, I'm looking at this third, um, plate right here. I, I mean, you guys can probably see what part of a area this is. See? We're over here at Portland into the West End, right there, right at the curve of the river. So you can kind of get a guess of where these sheets are going when they are, but never skip over something because you think. Your best friend's going to be the index, I can tell you that much. And I'm gonna to go to volume six just to skip ahead because I wanna see if I hit this index sheet, 
because I know that the first few volumes of this are Central Business District and downtown. So I'm kind of skipping around now and hopefully it'll load. Again, it takes a while and it seems to be slower. Come on. There we go. Oh, what's this? Bardstown Road, Ottoman Parkway. So I know this is relevant to Longest Avenue. I know that this is relevant to some of your um, interests. Speed Avenue, Slaughter. Slaughter, which is now Patterson. What is Slaughter? I just forgot it. Right over there by Cherokee. But Texas Avenue, Germantown. I mean, so you can see these are going to exist as, in the volumes as they go on. Um, 1928 to March, 1951. Um, there's some more. There's some addendums. They kind of went over and they did some things and then they changed their minds and went back and covered this again. And um, I would love to be an expert on every single version of this. Um, maybe one day I will be. But Honestly, this is a very, very easy database to use. What's complicated are the nuances of history. So you, you can click and you can look at what a street name is, but maybe a street name is different now. And, and that's what you need to be looking for. So, um, and that's something you can look up on Google. You can always contact me if you're like, this something's not right here with the street name. I'm absolutely happy to help. Um, I, I think, let me show you where the legend is. Let's go, let's do that real quick here. I'm gonna go to back to browse maps because actually this is at the beginning or about, I can't seem to, can I move this? There we go. When you log in over on the right side, it says maps legend. So that is that black and white legend, which I found out just a few days ago. Um, you can download this. It will be pretty small if you try to print it on an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper because look at how tiny that type is. But I think ProQuest has recently put a more high resolution image in here because before I would zoom in and it would get really blurry. But look at that now, so much better. So you're gonna be able to see the different codes and whatnot um, to correspond to your house. They've got a glossary over here on the right, which is pretty great. Um, and then that's all that weird BR, you know, brick second floor. That's what that means. Um, for the masonry construction, wood and glass. It's, it's pretty neat stuff. So this will be helpful. I would suggest downloading it to your computer. Um, over here, you can just download it and um, it'll save it as a PDF and you'll be able to um, just access it and zoom in on it as you need to. Um, do we have any questions? I, I think I think I know I, well, 50 minutes. I think I sped through this a decent time. Um, but if you have any questions, let me know. I'll, I'll answer them the best I can. Um, but I'm also happy to give you all my email address if you have any further questions. And thank you for listening to me ramble for almost an hour. <laughs> In the uh, chat sec session, uh, section, rather, uh, I did put your email address. So if people want it, they can go down there in the chat section and get it. Great. Thank you. Does Any anyone questions? else have a question? Okay. Yeah, I'd like to thank you very much. This was outstanding. I learned a lot. Really appreciate your presentation. Thank you. Happy to do it. It's been a long time. <laughs> um, I mean, if does this seem complicated to any of you? If so, tell me how I can clarify. Um, to, I mean, it's it's honestly the best way to learn is you just have to do it. People, people, I've I've received emails. It's like, can you um, tell me what page this is on for me? And, and I'm like, okay, happy to search this for you, but I, I have to do exactly what you would have done from home. And um, and it's just an incredible resource. 
And remember, folks, <laughs> if we don't use it, we lose it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kelly. Thank this you is so Anne, much. and we really appreciate all you've taught us today. Okay. Can anyone hear me? Yeah, Patricia Zimmerman. Yes, thank yes. you. Go ahead. Uh, I did get started late because I lost my sign in and finally found it. So I would really like to get how I get to this. How do I start? What do I type sure. in my browser to get here? Sure. And actually, I'll go over that right thank now, you. real quick here. So, um, the first thing you do is you go to our website. You can Google Louisville Free Public Library. It's LFPL, just like the acronym, Louisville Free Public Library.org. You go to our research tools because that is where our databases live. Every single database, which basically a database means it's something you're going to need your library card number and password to get into. Um, so you click on that. You can access the Sanborn Maps database by going into the genealogy and local history subject down here. Or you can go up here to find a research tool and just type in Sanborn Maps and it pops up and you just click on it. So from here is where it's going to ask you for your library card number and password. I'm currently logged in, so it's not asking me again. And from what I understand is as long as you have your browser open, it's not going to log you out. Um, I know that our newspapers database will log you out after inactivity, but I, I don't know. I don't think that's ever happened to me for this one. Um, and then you're there. Browse and explore. Select your state. Kentucky. Select your city, any of them. Thank you um, for that. I, you're welcome. Okay, now. <laughs> I have a question. Um, quick question. Go yes. ahead, Donna. Um, I think I've got this. Was not itself an insurance company. They just made the maps and then they sold them to the insurance companies. Is that correct? Well, there's, there's kind of a lot of different stories depending on the insurance company and on the map makers, um, but they were connected. So Sanborn was an insurance company that had underwriters and they also had map makers. Okay. They were all employed at the same place from what I understand. Okay. So other insurance companies weren't, uh, they were not available to other insurance companies. Um, See what I mean? Oh, yeah, no. And this was the, the kind of the end all be all. This was the big one. Okay. And there was, I think Sanborn, I forget, it's been a while, but there was, there was another company and another company and then they sold to Sanborn. There was a much bigger one at one point. Um, but because I, and I, I don't think that they were, um, I don't, I don't, this was something that was made that was requested by the United States to have done. Oh. I mean, I, I think it was something that they did for their own purposes. And then I think the government was kind of went, oh, wow, this is an important thing to have done because these insurance companies are doing a lot of work for us. Um, but it just kind of went hand in hand with it. Um, okay. Three items that you need to remember, Phil Heisel has uh, noted in the chat group that remember this presentation will be posted in full on the LGS YouTube channel. So you, could, you can watch it again. And Carol has asked, did you say there was a public website that showed the current and past photos? I think that was Louisville then and now, but Kelly, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, the, the current and past photos, um, it's, there's, it's all over um, Google, but if you were to type in, it's in Facebook is where I've seen the most recent activity okay. is Louisville then and now into Facebook. And it's a Facebook page. Um, and I really need to reach out to them because they just do fantastic work. So they'll give you a before and current, um, the most current version they have of a building or structure and then they'll even give a little bit of information, historical information about what it used to be and what it is now. Yeah. 
and somebody asked uh, about the PowerPoint. Kelly is going to be sure that we get that. Um, she's going to send us the PowerPoint. Yeah, I'll and send we'll, it to you in PDF. And we'll, uh, Phil, how will we get it then? Well, uh, I will put it on the uh, YouTube. Right. You, and you all can always, my email is right there. If you can't, if you don't make it to That's, the YouTube, email me as well, and I'll be happy to send it to you. That will be the best way. Thank you. I think so. And Mary asked, do you know if the street numbers in downtown Louisville were changed at one time? I know they were, <laughs> yeah. but I don't know if it was when uh, these maps were. <laughs> yeah. So the answer is yes, they were. And also in the Highlands, I just recently found out doing research for somebody. Um, yes, they did. Um, and if that is something, depending on, it was 1908, well, between 1907 to 1909, they changed a lot of street names. And there's an, an actual city, uh, a guide called Fuss's um, Street Guide. And it tells you what the old and the new, the old numbers were and what the new numbers are now um, during that time. That is actually not published online that I found, but it is digitized and we only have it internally at the library. I've actually, I'm dreaming of getting that put out because it's past all of that copyright stuff. So it could, I'm happy to look up a street address for you if it's old Louisville or a different part around that time. But honestly, you know, you can see that these were made between 1892 to um, 1905. So those two are right there. So you would have to know the old addresses. And then after that, it's all the new. Kelly, how do you spell that street guide, the name of that street guide? Bus. F is in Frank, U is an umbrella, S is in Sam, S is in Sam. Fuss. Okay. Like, don't fuss about it. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> uh-huh. Any other questions? Um, if you need to know more about getting on our YouTube channel, uh, Phil, is there information on our website for people who aren't used to... Um, using who haven't been involved with us before on the website on the uh, YouTube channel uh, there is uh, an article in this month's newsletter and is that available to the public uh, on the website yes thank you someone says I would like to investigate the properties once owned by the Claggett estates I don't know uh, anything about that. The um, Oh, Atherton well, High School. Okay. Atherton. Yeah. I mean, that's all going to be on there for sure um, on the later ones. So you'll be able to use the index for that. Of course, you can have the street, you know, name and whatnot. But depending on the area you're looking in on whichever plate it is, of the volume, you can probably, if it's a school, you'll see it in the index. What about Jeffersonville maps? You got to talk to the Indiana library. You okay. got to talk to them and see, cause it's an Indy, it would be an Indiana um, Sanborn map. And unfortunately ProQuest did not include all of Kentucky Hannah in that. It's just state by state. Well, I, I have don't... a question. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, <laughs> is, my li is my library card good in Indiana? <laughs> <laughs> No, <laughs> oh. <laughs> different library system. Um, it would be great if it was, we were all one, but it's still separated by state. Okay. I have a question. Go ahead. Um, my family, I live in Northern Kentucky now, but my uh -huh. family is from Louisville in the 1830s. And I find a number of properties um, in, in the history I'm reviewing, especially um, in probate. What is the best way to find out where these are? Um, you said the, the, the street names have changed. And so in the 1830s, um, 
And th the best way, honestly, I would research would be to first go to the city directories, which there are some during that time. Yes. Um, yeah. Because I if it's from 1832 on, I found these folks. Uh-huh. And you, you found them in the city directories? Yes. Uh-huh. Great. So if you have, um, so you already know what address that they have then. Right. Um, and so you would email me with some addresses and I would look in that buses street guide because it's changing street names and numbers. So I'd be able to correlate what, I'd be able to cross-reference what that is and give you the information so you can know what they currently are. Oh, that is fantastic. Utterly fantastic. I know I, I've, I've resumed my genealogy that I started 20 years ago and wow. I found out that at that time, my family has an obelisk. Um, it's in the middle of the street when I found it. Um, and I don't even know if I could find it again, um, but um, the Ravertys, there's three members of that family on it. And it's, I don't know, it's, <laughs> it's fun to try to do it, but without some more knowledge, it's, it's not going to, to work for me. But I um, appreciate you giving me your email. No, sure. And actually, if for any of you that are still tuned in, let me um, kind of just digress for a second, or actually kind of, I'm just going to piggyback on what you said, um, University of Louisville Digital Archives. If you were to Google the University of Louisville Digital Archives, write that down, U of L Digital Archives. Got it. Um, this is a place that I also use. I mean, there's still millions of items they have yet to digitize, but this is pretty great. So you can type in um, a street name. You can type in, I mean, a lot of people come into the library and they say, I want pictures of my house. Oh, and, okay. I, and I laugh and I say, so do I. <laughs> and um, it's, it's just not uh, everyone. We all want our genealogy to be given to us in a fancy book. Or we all want photos of our houses and where they've been. And it's just it's not always the case. Um, but I always tell people to look at street names. Um, uh, what's a good one? Um, Longest Avenue, just for fun. Um, so if, you, if you're trying to find your house, don't necessarily look up your house number, but on here, they will have a bunch of results for you. Um, they're always going to try to give you the um, newspapers that are digitized first. But like here, you, you can kind of get some street views of um, which, you know, your house might be on. So don't type in your house number, but if you type in their street name, into this, these archives, you might find a picture of your house. Like, I don't, you know, these are people's homes. There they are in, histor in historical photos. So that's, that's another great resource when you're doing these searches um, to get kind of an idea of what you're looking for. I hope that helps. I send people here all the time. Um, Ellie, there is also a lot of information at uh, Jefferson County Metro Archives. Oh, and I send yeah. people there too. Um, I, from last time I talked to them, I believe they're open by appointment only. Um, Louisville Metro Archives, you can Google that. They're over on Industry Road. Um, I, I need to go meet those, those folks over there. I've, I've spoken to them. Um, They've got a lot of really great information, but that's another place to look up. Those of you who don't know where Industry Road is, it's off of 7th Street Road, just north of Algonquin. Yep, right there. Kind of tucked back in that one road. Um, all the, the resources that you mentioned um, are great. Now, what about the Filson Club? Is that a good source? Or what I mean, do they have different that, that you all have? That's a good question, Joanne. So the Filson, they have everything. <laughs> the Filson has everything. They are amazing. <laughs> um, but they they do send people over to us a lot for our newspaper archives. We, we do have a lot more of ephemera when it comes to 
newspaper archives. The Filson also, I believe, does have a subscription to the Sanborn map. So if you belong to the Filson and not the library, um, I won't shame you, um, but you can <laughs> access it from them as well. Um, the Filson, they have a lot of, you know, personal objects. They have objects. They have um, letters. They have really great things. So if you're researching your family and they might have been a family that was somewhat prominent, always check with the Filson. You never know what they have. They, uh, I, I could get lost. I could, I've tried to like sneak in there and spend the night. I'm kidding, but I, <laughs> I would love to just go and play and all their stuff that they have. Um, but feel free to always email them. They're really friendly and they know so much and you can learn a lot from them. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you for this program. It was wonderful. Thanks for bearing with me, folks. <laughs> <laughs>